Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we get to take a look at this. This is the Revelpoint Mini 2 3D Scanner. We do have a coupon code that works both on the Revelpoint website as well as Amazon. You can find it in the description of this video, but if you enter Lead Revo 100 at checkout, you'll currently get $100 off the purchase of a Mini 2 scanner. Now, this coupon code will be valid, but the amounts may change depending on current promotions and sales through Revelpoint. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to see reviews from affiliate channels. I will say that Revelpoint has never told us to say anything specific. We simply get a scanner to play with and we get the specs and any required or requested information. This was true for the Inspire and the Morocco scanners and this Mini 2 is no different. Revelpoint also has a Facebook group for the Mini series of scanners. Now, I'm not personally on Facebook, but if you're on Facebook and you're looking for a support group, definitely check out the Facebook group and they do have giveaways from time to time. You can find the link in the description of the video and you can also find it on the Revelpoint website. With all that said, let's talk a bit about the scanner, how much it costs, what you get, and where it fits into the overall lineup. So first things first, in the US, this is listed at $829. There's an advanced kit you can get for $100 more, and the only difference with that is going to be the two axis turntable. So the scanner itself and all the accessories you get in the standard kit still come with the advanced kit. You just get that extra turntable. So for this video, we're gonna focus on the standard kit and talk about everything you get. We're not gonna do an unboxing because you can go to the website and you can see what all the pieces in the kit are, but of course you get the scanner, you get a tripod that is telescoping, which is pretty nice. And probably one thing that I like more than I should is the carrying case. Now, the reason for that is because at this price point, you generally don't see a lot of effort put into cases. And what I mean by that is this case has everything we need in it. When we open it up, we get a turntable. Of course, we get that sample bus that comes with all the RevoPoint scanners. And then we get our magic mat, we get the marker dots, we get a calibration board and all the cables. Now most of the time when you see kits like this, they will omit a space for the calibration board. Either it's too large to put in a carrying case or for some reason it's just not important. But if you happen to take your scanner anywhere, whether it's just another room, another building, another state or city, Oftentimes you have to recalibrate just because it gets bumped around and jumbled around. It's a good idea to be able to bring that with you. So pretty nice that it comes with the carrying case, but again, that's one thing that I look for when I'm talking about scanners in this price segment is being able to carry everything with me when needed. With that out of the way, let's talk a bit about the scanner. Let's talk about what changed from the Mini to the Mini 2 and how it stacks up to the Morocco. So in terms of technology, in the Revelpoint lineup, there are two main scanner technologies. There's IR structured light, like the Morocco, and there's a blue structured light, like the Mini series. Now with the Minis, the blue structured light actually provides a little bit of a performance benefit. In general, blue structured light is gonna be more precise, more accurate, capture detail better, and be less subjective to ambient light. Now it's not an outdoor scanner, but if you have a bright shop, a bright workspace, if you're dealing with lighting panels and things like that, then this is gonna be a little less sensitive when you're trying to set up the exposure on your scan. Now, when you're setting up the exposure, if you have a situation where you can't get the proper exposure, either it's too much or too little, that means that the scan is probably gonna be pretty bad. So that's nice that you do have that blue structured light and uh, it comes in both the Mini and the Mini 2. That hasn't changed. What has changed, however, is that the depth cameras on either side of the scanner have moved slightly. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, it gets you about an extra two inches or 50 millimeters away from the object you're scanning. That means that you have a little bit more room to play with, which if you've scanned anything with a small scanner like this, you know that can be pretty tough. In addition to that, we also see an increase in the area that we can scan. Because the sensors have been moved a little bit, we get a bigger area. So that also does help, especially when you're dealing with small parts like this. In the center, we have our projector that's gonna be the same across the board for pretty much every 3D scanner. And next to it, we have the RGB camera. For the Mini 2, they've updated this to a two megapixel camera and they have a larger aperture, which lets in a little bit more light. That's gonna do a better job of capturing those colors and textures. 
On the outside of all of the different cameras and sensors here, we've got what are called flash LEDs. Those are gonna help in a couple of different areas, mainly with tracking. So if you're using marker dots or magic mat, the LEDs here for the flash LEDs are gonna help illuminate those reflective dots. If you're dealing with a feature-based scan, then it's also gonna help there because it can help illuminate those darker areas. So a nice addition to the Mini 2. And on the back side, there are a couple of changes as well. We have now upgraded to USB-C, which is pretty much a universal connector. And there's an addition of two extra buttons, the plus and minus on the back, which help you set that initial exposure or the contrast that you see on your scans. So being able to do this on the scanner itself is helpful because if you're paired to a phone or if you're trying to reach over to a laptop, sometimes that just can be difficult. So those are nice additions, but there are a couple of more things that have changed. Things that we can't see on the inside are updates to the IMU. The IMU is the inertial measurement unit, basically what tells it if you're turning it, twisting it, moving it up and down. That helps position the scanner in 3D space about your object, which means that the tracking is gonna be more consistent. You're gonna have less dropped tracks as you move around your object, but with the updated IMU, we also see the addition of a feature that allows us to automatically drop bad frames. So if you're scanning an object and you move too fast or you trip or slip, a lot of times you'll get extra scan data that doesn't align with the rest of the scan. That noise is automatically filtered out based on the new settings. There have been some hardware changes as well. The Mini was capturing at 10 frames a second. The Mini 2 can capture more points per frame as well as capturing at 16 frames a second now. And the last big change on the inside is the update to Wi-Fi 6. So if you're using this for wireless tethering to say a smartphone, the update from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 means you can transfer more data. All that's pretty nice to know, but how does that really change things in reality? Well, when we think about the Mini and the Mini 2, as well as the near mode on the Morocco, all of those come in at 0.02 millimeters for single frame precision and 0.05 millimeters for single frame accuracy. So when we think about that, it means that if you're scanning a small object, it is accurate within plus or minus 0.02 millimeters and 0.05 respectively. That doesn't change from the Morocco to the Mini or the Mini 2. But remember the blue structured light is gonna be slightly better when we're talking about precision, accuracy, and capturing those details. So since the numbers are the same, what is the real benefit of picking a different scanner? Well, it's not really a fair comparison to talk about the Morocco and the Mini 2. They're in slightly different pricing segments. This one is about $1,400 US and it has extra functionality that the Mini 2 doesn't. So for the purposes of this comparison, I'm gonna talk about the features that matter. Now, again, we've already covered the IR structured light versus the blue structured light. There are some performance gains and quality gains to be had there. But one of the bigger differences between these two is gonna be the RGB camera. The Morocco has a 48 megapixel RGB camera, while the Mini 2 only has a two megapixel camera. So if you're really interested in capturing things like texture and color data, then the Morocco is gonna do that better. If you're not as focused on capturing color data or texture data, and you're really just looking at the raw scan data, then the Mini 2 is probably gonna be a better bet when you're talking about those small, precise objects. Now the Morocco is all encompassing, handheld, everything you need is here. You don't need a tether to a phone or a laptop where when you're talking about the Mini 2, you do need to be tethered to a smartphone, a laptop or a PC. So that is a downside or a benefit depending on how you look at it. So who is the scanner for? Well, if you are really looking for a new 3D scanner and you're only focused on scanning smaller, highly detailed objects, that's where the Mini 2 really lives. It can do bigger stuff. You could scan an entire transmission with it, but you're not gonna scan a car body, for example. Scanning larger objects is gonna take a bit more time simply because the frame or the area that we have to scan in is gonna be smaller than something like the Morocco. That's because the Morocco has the larger sensors on the outside that gives it a far mode similar to something like the Range series. So with all that said, 
That's a lot of information, but in the end of the conversation, you have to decide if you're looking for a new 3D scanner, is this going to be the right one for you? Now, I think the updates from the Mini to the Mini 2 are definitely performance boost. You get more frames per second, a bigger scanning area, more of a range that you can be within, and obviously Wi-Fi 6. So if you're scanning over the air to a cell phone, for example, this is going to give you a big performance boost. Is it worth it to upgrade from a Mini to a Mini 2? Probably not, because at the end of the day, the scan itself is going to be the same quality. You're not really gonna see a big difference in the actual data that you get. You're gonna capture it faster. It's gonna be a bit easier with the scanner, but is it worth the change to spend another eight, $900 for it? Probably not. But if you're in the market for a scanner to do those small detailed objects, I think that this one's pretty good. To help you make that decision, we will be producing more content with both the Mini 2 and the Morocco scanners so you can get a good idea what the results look like from both of those scanners. Now, in the description of this video, there is a Fusion link. You can take a look at two scans. One came from the Mini 2 and one came from the Morocco, and these are small detailed casting areas of that turbo. Now, if you take a look at both of these, they were done with minimal processing in RevoScan and a little bit of smoothing happened inside of Fusion. So take a look at those scans, but note that we will have more content coming in the near future. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. We'll do our best to answer those. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.